In this video, we'll generalize the addition of spins to addition of angular momenta of all kinds. We'll start by generalizing spin addition. Then we'll introduce the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. And finally, we'll derive the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. So addition of spin for hydrogen is the simplest case, the more general case, which is adding angular momenta of any kind, that is orbital angular momentum or intrinsic angular momentum from multiple sources. If we have two spins, S1 and S2, their sum gives all possible values of the spin from S1 plus S2 down to S1 minus S2 absolute value in integer steps. Therefore, S can take on the values S1 plus S2, S1 plus S2 minus 1, S1 plus S2 minus 2, so on, and so on, down to absolute value of S1 minus S2. The combined eigenstate of the total spin, given by a ket identified with the total spin and total magnetic quantum number, is given by a linear combination of the composite states for S1 and S2. This is a sum of over m, where m is equal to m1 plus m2, of the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient, which is identified by five indices, m1, m2, and m, and s1 and s2, and the product state of s1, m1, and s2, m2. The probabilities of each of these product states uh, are given by the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient, in particular, the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient squared. Let's take a look at the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients for addition of spin S1 equals 2 and S1 equals, S2 equals 1. So this is a typical table. We have S1 here and S2 here up in the corner. They remain the same no matter what. And over on the left side below, in the white boxes, are the values of m1, m2 for all possible values and combinations of m1 and m2. And if you look at these, you have 2, 1. Down here, you have minus 2, minus 1. And if you look through every line here, every line has a different combination. On the top, we have the total spin on on the upper part and total m on the lower part. So for spin s1 equals 2 and s2 equals 1, the values of total spin can range from the sum, which is 3, down to the difference, which is 1. And you can see here we have 3, and there are 7 values for the 3, which makes sense because if you have s equals 3, then m uh, goes from minus 3 to 3, which gives you 7 values, which is 2 times s plus 1. And you can have 2, and there are 5 values for that, for the same reason. And then you can have s equals 1, and there are 3 values for that, 3 possible entries for that. Underneath you have s sub, uh, m sub s, the total magnetic quantum number, and you can see here for 3, you have 3, 2, 1, and so on, all the way down to minus 3. And similarly, for 2 and 1, where you have plus 1, 0, and minus 1. So let's look at how these Klebsch-Gordon coefficient tables work. The uh, entries in gray are the square of the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient, with a sign that tells you how to apply the Klebsch-Gordon coefficient in your sum of product states. And so, for example, we have a state 3, 0, which is up here. S equals 3, M equals 0. And it's composed of three terms in product state. The first term is a 2, 1, 1, minus 1. So that means S1 equals 2, M1 equals 1, S2 equals 1, M1 equals minus 1. And that you can see here as M 1 and m2 and of course s1 and s2 are fixed because they're up here in the corner and the coefficient for that is 1 over the square root of 5 which is here shows 1 fifth we take the square root of that we get square root of 1 fifth 
The next term is the product state of 2, 0 and 1, 0. And you can see the m1 and m2 here. And the coefficient is square root of 3 fifths. The third term is a product state of 2 minus 1 and 1, 1, minus 1 and plus 1. And the uh, coefficient is square root of 1 fifth again. Now, if we take the probabilities of each of these, you square them to get the probabilities, and you get 1 fifth plus 3 fifths plus 1 fifth equals 1, which is as it should be. You can also use the table to figure out how you can break down the product state, a particular product state, into a combination of S, total spin, and total M states. And that is shown in this uh, box here, which is the blue box, where we take the state, the product state, 2, 0, 1, 0, right? M1 equals 0, M2 equals 0, S1 equals 2, S2 equals 1. And we break it down into terms for total spin and total M. The first term gives you square root of 3 fifths times the state s equals 3 and m equals 0. The second term is 0 because there's a 0 in the klebsch gordon coefficient. And the third term is minus square root of 2 fifths times the state 1, 0. So s equals 1 and m equals 0. And you can see it's square root of 2 fifths and there's a minus sign here. Again, if I take the square of these probability of these uh, coefficients to get the probabilities, this is three fifths plus two fifths is also equal to one. So you can derive the Klebsch Gordon coefficients in an analytical way, and there are many papers written out there saying a simple way to derive the Klebsch Gordon coefficient. In my opinion, they're not all terribly simple, but there is a practical way to do it. Uh, that we're going to go over now, which is a how to generate uh, the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients using a, an iterative uh, form. So we'll generate the coefficients starting with the general procedure. So the goal is to find an expression for each of the total spin states, S, M, in terms of the states of the individual particle spins. We'll start with the initial basis states which are states with S1 and M1 and S2 and M2. So these states have four quantum numbers, and we're going to abbreviate them as M1, M2. So we're going to assume the S1 and S2 are constant, and we're just not going to include them for brevity. So each of these states are eigenstates of the total spin in the z direction. So these represent product states that we had before in two terms. We represent these as a single state with m1 and m2, but it's really a product state of s1, m1, and s2, m2. So each of these states are eigenstates of the total spin in the z direction. s sub z for the total spin is equal to s sub 1z plus s sub 2z. So if we apply this operator to this total uh, state m1, m2, we get the following. s sub z applied to m1 and m2. Well, s sub z, the part s1z acts only on m1, and it doesn't act on m2. And the s2z acts only on m2, but not on m1. And so when I apply s1z, I get m1 times h bar times the state back again, leaving the uh, both, both terms untouched. When I apply S2z, I get h bar m2, leaving the entire state untouched. And since there's a sum between them, you get that the quantum, uh, the expectation value, or when you get, a, when you apply S sub z to a state m1, m2, you get h bar m1 plus m2 times the state back again showing that this is, in fact, an eigenstate of S sub z. So the state with the highest value of m, which is 
the highest value, the value of S, which is S1 plus S2, must map to a single state. Because if you recall in the Klebsch-Gordon table, there's only one of those at the top. That is, when the total spin is equal to S1 plus S2 and M is equal to S. And that single state in the original basis has a value of S equals S1 plus S2 and M is equal to S1 plus S2. <coughs> Since M has its maximum value, S must be its maximum value also. So we can write this state with S being S1 plus S2 and M being S1 plus S2. And that has to be the product state of M1 equals S1 and M2 equals S2. Because that's the only way you can get capital, uh, you can get the total magnetic quantum number to be that big. And so you add M1 plus M2 to get M, and you have S1 plus S2 to get S. So we can extract the first klebsch gordon coefficient simply by realizing that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the state where M1 is equal to S1 and M2 is equal to S2 with the state S1 plus S2 and S1 plus S2 for M. So these two are equivalent and you get one. So the first klebsch gordon coefficient is one. The next states down with the same value of S, that is the maximum value that you can get, must have a value of M that's lower than the maximum value by one, because that's the rule. M goes from S to minus S, but it's depths of one. So we can get that by, lower, by realizing that the next value of M is going to be S1 plus S2 minus 1. And there are two states which satisfy this condition. The first one is S1, S being S1 minus 1 and S2. M, pardon me, M1 being S1 minus 1 and M2 being S2, because now the sum of them gives you s1 plus s2 minus 1. But the other possibility is m1 is equal to s1 and m2 is equal to s2 minus 1. Again, you get m is equal to s1 plus s2 minus 1 because it's always equal to the sum of m1 and m2. So one of these combinations of these two states must be the state which is obtained by applying the lowering operator S minus to the first state. Well, remember, the lowering operator applied to the first state where you have S1 plus S2 for S and S1 plus S2 for M must be the sum of the two lowering operators as we showed before. So S1 minus plus S2 minus applied to the product state M1 equals S1 and M2 equals S2 is how you generate this new state. So if you generate by applying the lowering operator, you can get the final value. You then take the state that you generate and you repeat to generate all the states with the same value of S and different values of M. So you apply the lowering operator consecutively to get all the states all the way down to the lowest state, which would be uh, S is equal to S1 plus S2, and M is equal to minus the quantity S1 plus S2. That's the lowest value. So that takes care of all the states that you need to use to get S equals S1 plus S2 and all the possible values of M. So states with the same value of M, but different values of S can be generated using the unused combinations of the original basis function and then lowered again.
So for example, if the combination that, give, that is obtained by applying s minus to the original state s and m equals s, s equals s1 plus s2 and m is equal to s1 plus s2, when you generate the combination state of these two, let's suppose it has a plus sign in there, then you have the unused combination, which would be the minus sign, right? Because you, you have two states, you can combine them with, with a positive sign or a negative sign. So you use the minus sign, that must be the state with the same value of m, that is s1 plus s2 minus 1, but one value lower of s. And so that must be the top of the ladder for the next lower value of s. You just repeat this until you go all the way down. 